there we are. I am here in the belly of the beast and I just wanted to do a quick quick video about the wisdom that's been given to me about the second beast of the book of Revelation particularly Revelation chapter 13 as we look at a interesting monument behind me over my shoulder and uh, why exactly is this structure here in a place in the middle of the great country of the United States near the center the city of Memphis the city of Memphis and this is near the center of the country actually and so I want to talk about the second beast which gives power back to the first beast in Revelation and causes everyone to worship the first beast and become subject to the first beast and I have a little object lesson to share with everybody as I do this video on the second beast but it may come as a surprise the identity of the second beast and who that is. It is a spiritual Egypt, if you haven't come to that conclusion already. Um, not too far north, just above where we are currently in Memphis, uh, also centrally located in the U.S., is a place in southern Illinois called Little Egypt. Little Egypt. And it just so happens that this is in the crosshairs of a heavenly sign. The, the paths of the solar eclipse, which came down from Washington, right down across South Carolina. Well, the second one is going to be going more up across the U.S., but that little crosshairs from 2017 to 2024 is right centered over Little Egypt, Illinois, just north, just above Memphis. Now, Memphis was the ancient capital of, excuse me, yeah, Memphis was the ancient capital of Egypt and the location of the Giza pyramids. So what do, what do we see about the beast of Revelation chapter 13? The second one. The second beast is like unto a lamb with two horns. Big horn sheep have horns. Lambs can have horns. And it speaks as a dragon. Well, similarly, the first beast speaks as a lion and is given the power, given its power by the dragon. So essentially what we have is a kingdom who is essentially a wolf in sheep's clothing because it's empowered by the dragon, but it appears maybe to look like a lamb, talk like a lamb. See lamb sheep are good in scriptural um references but a dragon is evil because the dragon is associated with the devil so what is this kingdom why is this kingdom and i just have a little object lesson here right here i got a little booklet that i can read my rights the constitution citizens rule book bill of rights i don't know if it's reversed for you but that is the bill of rights the constitution freedom of speech well i hate to tell you but for everyone setting foot in this place of merchandise this bass pro shop They've been sold into slavery. The people of America have been officially 
sold into slavery. We've been sold out. We've been sold out to the new world order. It is official. It has taken place. It's a done deal. And we need to be delivered. The saints of the Most High need to be delivered. Now, interestingly, when we read Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 17, we see these beasts, but we see particularly a woman, a harlot woman, riding on the beast. Do we not? Who is the woman? The woman is the church, the saints. See, the second beast gives back power to the first beast. And the first beast is Rome. If we really study history and we study the Bible, we know that the Roman Empire came into power. And, you know, the early reformers understood something. Calvin, John Calvin, John Wycliffe, and Martin Luther understood something. They said the Antichrist is the Pope. They recognized something. And, you know, Rome is both a civil power as well as a religious power. The Roman Catholic Church as well as simply Rome. A nation. A small little nation right there. That's the first beast. Well, the first beast sits on many waters, and many waters are interpreted as many people. Well, the second beast comes out up out of the earth. If waters are many people, then the earth would be a sparse land with not many people. So the second beast comes up out of the earth. That's America. America is the second beast, which will give back power unto the first. So our nation, how can that be? I thought we had the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. I thought we had religious freedom. Well, you know, with, with religious freedom comes also religious freedom for secret societies religious freedom for the Luciferians, religious freedom for all the occult groups. So there's a lot that comes along with religious freedom. And I was reading in my rule book, and you see the Ten Commandments. You see the Ten Commandments, but we don't enforce the Ten Commandments. We don't abide by the Ten Commandments. We don't want, they don't want the Ten Commandments in the school, nor do they pay attention to the Fourth Commandment, the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. But see, everything in this country, as I'm here on one of the high days of the beast, between a couple of the high holy days, AKA Christmas and January 1st, New Year's. A couple of the high Roman festival days, originally called Saturnalia. And then they'll begin the first of the year on the Roman pagan calendar, which January begins these months named after Roman gods and then you get to July after Julius Caesar and Augustus after uh, Caesar Augustus so of course we see the Roman pagan calendar which is called the Gregorian calendar after Pope Pope Gregory who is able to make war with the beast that's what you call a beast when it has so much steam and so much power, nobody's going to change the calendar. But the days of the week, named after Roman, Greco-Roman, pagan, mythical gods. And what else do we see? We see a kingdom that acts like a lamb, maybe looks like a lamb, but talks like a dragon. Oh, there it is. Oh, 
similar. What is that on the American dollar bill? See the all seeing eye? Doesn't that look very, very similar? Center of the United States. So we've identified the second beast of Revelation 13. The one that maybe appears to be a lamb because they have the Ten Commandments in their constitution, which is being stepped all over because we're being sold out to slavery. The people have been enslaved, put back into bondage of the beast system, and giving back power to the first beast, the Antichrist power of the Vatican, Rome, the first beast. All our days are named after their gods, the planets, the heliocentric model, all of that solar system, giving honor to Roman pagan gods, the calendar, the Gregorian Pope Gregory, um, and on and on it goes. And if you really study much, Babylon at the time of John, when he wrote Babylon in the 666, that was none other than Rome. And Rome also destroyed Jerusalem in about the year AD 70. So we've identified a country that is, I thought, it's supposed to be Christian people, Christian men. But see, what are they doing building these types of structures in the middle of everywhere? How come just about every church worships on Sunday, established by Rome, and has an obelisk on top of their building? You don't have to research much to figure out what an obelisk celebrates. The original obelisk, Heliopolis, was in Egypt. And all the sun worship that began in Egypt was transferred into Rome, in the Vatican City. So now they have the supreme obelisk. So now is it starting to make sense? Building an image unto the first beast? Celebrating, what are Christian people doing celebrating Egypt? And right here in the capital of ancient Egypt with another Egyptian pyramid on our world supreme one dollar bill. That is what we call a wolf in sheep's clothing or a dragon in lamb's clothing. That's a beast. That's a beast that speaks one thing, but talks and acts a different way. So there we have the second beast of Revelation chapter 13. That's the revelation that's been revealed unto me. We've been sold into slavery. They've sold the people into slavery, sold us out to the new world order, and we better wake up. I can't remember when this thing was built. I think it was in the 90s. I googled it, but the Memphis Grizzlies played here for a little while. The uh, University of Memphis played here for a little while. Um, all kinds of concerts have gone on here. And now it's the Bass Pro Shop. So I just needed to stop and share and expose because we are the second beast and we are in bed and and notice the the harlot woman riding the beast the woman is that great city it says well that woman that harlot woman that adulterous woman is the church is the 
church the pagan church because it says come out of her my people we have to do everything we can to come out of this beast system we cannot ride this beast system any longer we must come out of her it's easy to also see the symbolism of the woman on the u.s interestingly you have lady liberty you have district of columbia so columbia and lady liberty two more women figures on this country as well as on rome because rome is the church so we see the symbolism and the connection of the saints who have joined in hand to honor and worship other gods i got people coming in here i preached in front of this structure and i have people saying amen as they go in but what kind of believer is going to go in and engage in sales of merchandise in this thing? Because we know that Egypt was plundered by Yahuwah. Yahuwah plundered Egypt. So, speaking false things acting like a lamb acting all christian acting all good but not good dragon beast beast power and everyone worshiped the beast and his image and that's exactly what is happening people are sold out to this television that tells people what to do to worship who the jesuits rome again we have a catholic president fauci is a jesuit they work for the first beast and if you don't know about that then you need to do some more studying you just haven't realized it of who is working behind the scenes of all this stuff like i said the calendar is named after Rome. The planets, the days of the week. But they're high, high holidays, but we're not instructed as Christians to observe those holidays. Why do people keep doing it? Why do they keep worshiping and honoring the beast on false pagan holidays when Paul the Apostle... <laughs> This breaks all the people that think Paul said, let no one judge you about the Sabbaths. You don't have to keep them. Who cares about the day? Guess what? This breaks that because Paul the Apostle instructed the people at the believers at Corinth in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. He said, let us keep the feast of Passover and unleavened bread. So how is he instructing believers gentile gentile believers to keep the feast of unleavened bread and passover and yet people think that paul instructed them not to keep the sabbath so either you have a very double-minded contradictory apostle paul or you have simply misunderstood him because he said let no one judge you for your part in a sabbath as believers, we're keeping Yahuwah's days. He said, these are my feasts. He didn't say, these are my feasts for Jews. He said, these are my feasts. We have no business as Christian believers keeping pagan days that the beast gives us. So, there it is. I just wanted to talk about the revelation given to me about this spiritual Egypt and also you see in prophecies in Isaiah and Ezekiel where Egypt Babylon and Israel are all 
one working together. That's what we have. But it's the beast system. Praise Yah for the wisdom revealed. Remember, it's on the dollar bill. I proved it. I proved it that the U.S. is nothing more than a wolf in sheep's clothing. They're a beast. Have a good night.